Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Chef Boy RV. This time we're going to get into something a little bit more intricate than last time. I'm actually going to make something from scratch this time. Now, my goal on this ch channel was to try to make things that were somewhat conducive to an RV and uh, easy things to make and so forth. Uh, unfortunately, not everything qualifies for that. Some things are just going to make a bit of a mess and there's nothing else you can do about it. Uh, I put out on Facebook and on YouTube basically asking people if we, what you want me to see me make next and uh, I gave a list of I think five options and the winner by far was meatloaf. I'm as surprised as some of you may be but uh, meatloaf it is. Give the people what they want. So my apologies in advance for the, any audio issues. Uh, I still haven't replaced the lapel mic which broke during my previous trip to Tawas. So I'm having to record on the regular mic built into the camera and I've got the air conditioning on and that sort of thing. So that's just the way it's going to be. I'll do my best and hopefully it'll be good enough. Now, uh, I've only made meatloaf one time and it was 10 years ago ish. It's been a long time. Uh, we're going to give it a shot. I pulled a recipe off the, off the internet. And we're gonna see how it goes. Now, first thing we need to do is saute some onions and peppers in a saucepan. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna measure out our onion and our pepper. We don't need all of them. We'll see how much we do. All right, first thing we gotta do is measure out one cup of chopped onion. And we're gonna do that in a very, hillbilly sort of way. Got this onion here, which I've already, my mother's already had at a little bit, so we're gonna sort of use up what's here. First thing we're gonna do is take the ends off of it. Uh, obviously I don't have an actual cutting board in here yet because I neglected to buy one. So we're just gonna use this plate to keep the mess off the counter. So we're gonna take our knife and we're gonna take the ends off the onion. go. Then we're going to take the skin part off of it. The outer layer of skin you don't want. It's very important not to put your face directly over the onion while you're doing this. Okay, there we go. All right, so we got all that out of here. Here's a little extra stuff. We're going to get rid of that. Set that there for now. Okay, I'm going to measure out about how much I think is going to be a cup. I suspect at least half of this, so we're going to chop it down in this direction like that. There we go. And I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to chop this up a little bit more. There we go. All right. Now I want to chop this up a little finer off here. I want to chop this up a little finer than that. I'm not crazy about the size there. So we're going to use this little device here. Uh, I got this online and what this does basically it's got a series of blades in there as you can see and every time you push down on this little handle this comes down then as it comes up it turns a little see and it comes down again and then it turns and it comes down again it just keeps on doing that chopping up whatever is inside it. So we take it out this little plastic thing here is really annoying because it's it's not secured on there. It keeps just just sits on there. So we're gonna take that, put the onions in there. There we go. We're gonna put that on. Okay, we got our uh, onions and our little. Uh, I'm gonna call it my chopper upperer. <laughs> I don't know if that's the correct terminology, I don't care. So we're just gonna chop those up. Okay, good enough. Now that we've got our onions chopped up, that's about a cup. Put those in. We can use our 
blunt edge of our knife to get the bulk, bulk of it out. Come on now. All right. There we go. Now we got to do our peppers. Okay, the next ingredient calls for one quarter of a bell pepper. Isn't that pretty? I've always liked bell peppers. I mean, the way they look anyway. I don't particularly like their flavor, but I know how important they are to cooking. Um, but I mean, that's a good looking piece of uh, produce. So we're gonna chop this guy up, quarter it first, half, then half again. There we go. We're gonna take the stem out. It's a little more than I meant to take out, but there you go. All right, and now we're just gonna chop this guy up. I really gotta get a real cutting board. All right, good enough. Take those and we'll put them in our pan with the onions. Okay, now that we've got our onions and peppers in the pan, we need to caramelize them. So we're going to get our stove here lit. Get our stove lit. There we go. I don't use the stove very often. So we're gonna get that going high and we're gonna heat this up. Okay, you can see we're getting close. They're starting to get brown. The onions are starting to turn brown. That's what we're looking for. We want a nice caramelization, they call it. We don't want to burn them, but we want a nice caramelization going on. We're getting there right now. So as soon as these are done, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so we've got our onions and peppers caramelized here. We're going to let those sort of sit. We got the heat off. Let's let those sit for now. The next thing is going to be to mix together all the other ingredients. The recipe calls for one pound of ground beef. This is two pounds, so I'm going to use half of it. Oh yeah. Why am I not a vegetarian? Because meat. That's why I'm not. Because meat. All right. So we slide that out of the way here. There we go. All right, so we kind of get that mixed up together. Let me try and move the camera, get you a better angle of what I'm doing, all right? Okay. Next one is one cup of breadcrumbs. And I'll get my measuring cups out here. Oh, and I'll drop my measuring cups on the floor. Oh, for heaven's sake, okay. Measuring cups. Here's my one cupper. So we just take our thing, we fill it up. Hopefully, I've got enough in here. Running out. Oh boy. Oh boy, that's close. All right, that's not quite enough. So close, but not quite. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, where's the lid? Right there. I have this. See, this is Italian flavored breadcrumbs, I might add. Okay, Italian style. I have this other cup of uh, garlic and herb. I'm gonna just add this a little bit for bulk, just to make sure we get a full cup. There we go. It's not quite the right thing to do, but sometimes you gotta improvise, all right? So we got a full cup of breadcrumbs. In it goes. What effect the breadcrumbs have on the meat? Uh, no idea, but I know they're important. Okay, one cup of milk. 
So I go to the fridge. One cup of milk. Bye bye. Guess that's gonna get absorbed by the breadcrumbs, I suppose. One egg. Okay, next cup, two tablespoons of ketchup. All right, ketchup. I always get Heinz, the king of ketchup. Sorry, but that Hunt's stuff is inedible. Inedible. All right, one tablespoon, not to be confused with teaspoon. Okay, let me get my teaspoon out here. Sorry about this. You got one tea, one teaspoon or one tablespoon. I don't know if you can tell because the light stinks, but there, okay. See that? Difference, obviously. Tablespoon. So, one tablespoon. Let me get on also a little plastic spoon here. So what I'm gonna do is take this thing off. Uh, two tablespoons, yep. Squirty, squirty. Get most of it out. Squirty, squirty again. I'm gonna take this little thing, I'm gonna scoop out the rest of it, make sure we get it all. There we go. Stick that there. Uh, let's see. The rest of it is all tea, oh wait. Here we go. One tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce sauce nobody can pronounce but everybody pretends that they can okay undo that one tablespoon there we go in we go oh yeah now we got a concoction going bubble bubble toil and trouble all right remove this stuff out of the way the stuff i've used over there all right next thing three quarter let's see quarter tablespoon of salt and three quarter tablespoon of pepper. Okay, salt and pepper, our teaspoon. One quarter teaspoon, interesting. Okay, we gotta sort of estimate that. Or no, certainly not one quarter, three quarter. Okay, that's about three quarters. In, close this so I don't make a mess. And our pepper. Come on. There we go. That's about three quarter. There we go. One teaspoon of parsley. Let me find my parsley. Is that it? There it is. Parsley. One teaspoon of parsley. Parsley. Okay, parsley. That's about a teaspoon. Okay. One teaspoon of paprika. Paprika, paprika. I know I have it here. There it is. Paprika. Okay. Take the lid off. Paprika. Oh, it's all crump, 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 uh, clumped up. Oops. A little too much. That's okay. This is not baking. We don't have to be super precise. All right, where are we now? Paprika, one teaspoon of chili powder. This is a surprising ingredient. Did not expect chili powder to be on the list, but there you go. Oh, okay, there we go. Chili powder. Okay, let me just go, th okay, now we gotta add our caramelized onions and peppers which are sticking to the pan because I'm an idiot and I forgot to put oil in it. Note to self, put some sort of a cooking spray or oil in the pan before you caramelize onions. Oh, this is gonna be loads of fun to clean up. Look at that, it won't even come off the spatula for heaven's sake. All right, good enough. 
That's my inexperience showing itself right there. Let's turn that back on. Okay, let me run through the thing. We got ground beef, we got breadcrumbs, we got milk, we got onion, we got egg, we got chopped pepper. Ah, I did miss one. Okay, one tea half teaspoon of garlic powder. Okay, I knew there was something I was missing. Garlic powder. All right, half a teaspoon. Ooh, that smells good. Very garlicky. Half teaspoon. Oop. That's all she wrote. Okay, so now. Do, 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 do. So now we mix all together. And we. I'm gonna have to mix this by hand, I can already tell. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, ready to get dirty. First of all, let me get this stuff off of the spoon. There we go. Ready, folks? Here comes the fun part. Oh, yeah. making sure to scrape the sides and get as much of it as you can. You don't want to leave anything stuck to the sides. I'm kind of mashing it and turning it as I go, right? Mixing and squishing and getting it all consistent. You want one consistency throughout. Okay, we're looking pretty good now. One good sign that we have it all pretty well mixed together as far as uh, ratios and so forth is that the meat is not sticking to the sides of the bowl. All right, that's one sign that your ratios are off. If your meat is sticking to the bowl, you probably should add more crumb, more bread crumbs. That's one thing I know. All right, so there we go. We got it pretty well mixed together into essentially a paste. <laughs> All right, there we go. Now, I'm gonna take this pan, it's called a bread pan, which uh, uh, they do actually make meatloaf pans that have a, a removable insert that has holes in it because obviously as the gr meat cooks, grease comes out of it. And so you're gonna get grease in the bottom of this. And with the meatloaf pan, you can actually lift out the, the insert with the meat in it and leave the grease behind. It's very useful, but I don't have one, so I'm going to use this. We'll just have to live with it. Put the meat into the pan. There we go. Going to get as much of it as we can. And we're going to form it into a loaf shape. pan actually probably could have held more. No, hold on, I don't want to mash it down too much, so I'm going to stir it back up again. I'm just going to kind of spread it out. Okay, there we go. We got it in there. Make sure it's even. We got a little too much on this side, so I'm gonna move a little over. There we go. We want it to cook evenly, so we gotta make sure it's fairly consistent throughout, which it is. There we go. All right, on to the next step. All right, the next step is to mix our sauce. So we start with one quarter cup of ketchup. Now, this is again, again we're gonna need another mixing spoon to know what size we're using here. So there's your one quarter cup. Like I said, this is gonna make a mess. We're gonna have to do some cleanup when this is done, unfortunately. It's just the reality. Not every dish can be adapted to have very little cleanup. There's half, or there's one quarter cup of ketchup. There we 
go. Okay, that's in there. Our uh, next deal is one or two tablespoons of red wine. Let me clean this up here. All right. Our next ingredient is two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. Okay. And you'll notice I'm using a lot of domestic brands for the ingredients. That's because, well, I don't care and I'm cheap. So we get this opened up. Two tablespoons of this. Hello. Okay. <laughs> that ain't going to work. Stay there. Get this little dealy off. There we go. One. Yeah, that's definitely vinegar. Two. Okay, we got two of those. Cap back on so I don't forget it. Come on, get on there. There we go. Ah, this is one I didn't expect here. Okay. All right. Two tablespoons of brown sugar. I didn't expect this one, but so be it. Heaping spoon. There we go. One heaping spoon and one small spoon. All right, that's done. That's done. Now the next one is one third cup of maple bourbon barbecue sauce. This I've never used before. I have absolutely no idea what it's going to taste like or smell like. So I got to get it open. Oh, for heaven's sake. Come on. This is like a Twilight Zone. There we go. There we go. Okay. So let's take this stuff and see how it smells. That's a very interesting smell. It's almost like cinnamon apple. All right, so it calls for one third of a cup, but I really don't want to mix up or dirty up yet another mixing spoon. So I'm going to take the quarter cup, fill it up all the way. Whoops. Throw that in there. And then just a little bit more. That's about a third of a cup. All right, that's good enough. Okay, put that off to the side there. And we mix this up. We're gonna mix it till we get a nice consistency. There we go. All right, looks like we're fairly consistent here. On to the next step. Okay, our next task is to get the oven preheated. So the recipe calls for 350. Uh, but as we've said, this is a convection oven. Supposedly you're supposed to reduce your temperature. However, my experience has been that it's not so good for that. Um, however, you got different settings here. You got, if this thing will focus, you got grill, convection, roast. I don't know if those do anything different. You also got cook, or you got bake. What was that? Let's try that. Let's bake. Now, what does that bake be? One, two, three, four, five. What does that mean? Okay, I don't know what that means. Point eight. What does that mean? All right, I don't know what that means. That's not the right thing. I think that's uh, I think that's microwave, so we're gonna ignore that. We're gonna go back to convection. We're gonna do convection like we did before, 350, and we're gonna start. All right, there we go. Now that's preheating, that's what that says. All right, so now we wait for that to preheat. While that's preheating, we have to pour half of our sauce over the meat. 
we've got our sauce here. Come on, focus camera. There we go. And we're just gonna sort of pour it over. See if I can do this one-handed. A little bit more. I'd say that's about half. Mm, maybe not, maybe a little bit more. Okay, that's about half. Okay, put that back on the paper towel so it doesn't drip. Take our little spoon here and spread this out. Okay, there we go. Thin layer over the whole thing is our goal here. There we go. There we go. All right. All right, so now as soon as it's preheated, we throw it in. Okay, we're preheated. So now, throw in the meat. Fold it sideways like so. And we're gonna put for uh, 30 minutes start. There we go. Okay, see y'all in 30. Okay, so we gotta take it out now that 30 minutes has expired. Yeah, we're looking good. Looking good, all right. Now the next thing the recipe says to do, I'm gonna mix up the rest of this sauce and it says pour the rest on there. There we go. Okay, spread it on there, pour the rest on, spread it out. There we go. And then we put it back in for another 25 minutes. I'll do that and I'll check back with y'all. Okay, we're here. All done, supposedly. Let's see how we did. Well, there it is. Nice and caramelized. Looks evenly cooked. Let's uh, let it rest for a minute and then uh, take out a few pieces and give it a try. Okay, we've let it rest for a bit. It's very important that you let it rest. It kind of lets some of the juices go back into the meat and keeps it from, you know, coming, becoming dry. So I'm going to go, I guess, to the end and just... The end is a bit charred. Let's just get through that here. Okay, I'm gonna need a spatula. Where's that spatula? I used earlier. There we go. apart. It doesn't really hold together too well, but it seems pretty good. So there's the finished product. Uh, it's got a nice glaze. It smells really good. <laughs> let's, uh, let's see how she tastes, huh? Oops. Come on now, get on the fork. Whoa! Actually, so hot I couldn't taste it too well. Let me get a little bit more. 
cool it off a little bit more before I shove it in my face. So there we go. You know when something's so hot, it kind of burns you, and so you're so preoccupied with the, the height, the heat, you don't even taste it. You just, ah, ah, ah. yeah, that's what that was. So here we go. Oh God. I'm sorry, that was, that was worse than the first piece. Oh, okay. Here's what I'm gonna do. Oh, I've never burned my esophagus before. Oh, okay. I'm gonna wait a few more minutes. <laughs> I'm gonna let it cool off a little more. I'll be back. Wow. Okay, I think it's cool enough now that I can eat it without, you know, bursting into flames. Okay, so here we go. Get on the fork. All right, my first review is that I think it might need a little bit more breadcrumb or maybe another egg. It's really kind of crumbly, and so it needs another binder of some sort to hold it more together. So maybe a little bit more breadcrumb. I don't know if that would do that, but I've heard egg is used as a binder, so I think maybe another egg would be helpful. That being said, here's the flavor. We got to make sure to get the glaze on there. See that? That's an important part of the flavor. So let's uh, give this a try, shall we? Hopefully I can actually taste it this time. Hey, that's good. That glaze has a nice sweetness to it. Uh, that, that brown sugar added a lot of sweetness to it. So you got the peppery sort of flavor with the pepper. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. The bourbon barbecue sauce, you can definitely taste the, the barbecue and uh, and the ketchup and you can really taste every ingredient. I gotta say, I've had meatloaf before. Uh, up until now, I'd say the best meatloaf I've eaten is at uh, Cracker Barrel. They've got great meatloaf there. Uh, this is better. Uh, just a flavor alone. Maybe not the consistency, but the flavor is spectacular. Mm. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna be making this, I'm gonna be making this a lot more in the future. This is flipping delicious. And now I'm just sitting here eating it because <laughs> I don't wanna stop eating it. So I guess that's what this channel has devolved into. You all watching me eat it looks almost like cake, doesn't it? Like or like a bread, like a, a banana bread. Uh, it doesn't taste like banana bread. It's still very hot. Mm. All right. Yeah, <laughs> it's delicious. Okay. So there we are. My, uh, I guess say my recipe for meatloaf, but it wasn't mine. I stole it from the internet but there it is uh i'm gonna have this for leftovers that's a nice thing you got leftovers uh, we got quite a mess to clean up uh, unfortunately but that's just the way the ball bounces not every uh meal can you know feed five people and only dirty one bowl uh so that's all for today hope you enjoyed the second episode of chef boy rv uh, head to facebook.com slash ramblin michigander and let me know what you thought and uh give me ideas for future meals to cook i got a few more few ideas in the works and we'll see how it goes so that's all for today see you guys later